So let me start. Hi. Welcome to Kinect, the eyes and ears of Windows. And I know that this title is somewhat you know, contradictory now that you know, the NSA, NSA, the American National Security Agency, having their eyes and ears everywhere. <laughs> but at least if you plug the Kinect out, you can be sure that it's not working. At least I hope so. <laughs> so uh, my name is Andras Schwerwand. I'm from Hungary. You can see all my Twitter and other uh, email addresses there. I'm a six-year Microsoft MVP, most valuable professional, which doesn't mean that I work for Microsoft. It means that I talk about Microsoft stuff, and Microsoft believes that I'm doing it OK. And this is my first year as a Kinect for Windows MVP, actually. So I'm very honored to be here with you and talk about Kinect now. I'm also thankful for Inata, who sponsored my trip here, without whom I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys, so make sure to, to thank them if the talk was okay. And uh, I also have a small company in Hungary, which is called Response, and what we're doing is uh, Windows Phone development, Windows 8 development, and Kinect development. So all the cool stuff that Microsoft has, we're working with that. We're also creating a game called Song Arc, which we believe will be huge and it will launch in September. So what I'm going to talk about today is, um, first I'm going to talk to you about the Kinect sensor itself, what it can do. Then I'm going to talk about the Kinect SDK, you know, software development kit, and what kind of features you can, you can have for that. And then I'm going to have a small peek into the future of Kinect. So let's get started. The Kinect um, is a marvelous piece of technology. It has a lot of things integrated in one box which are by themselves extraordinary. For example, it has a motorized tilt. Well, this is not extraordinary, but this is necessary. The motorized tilt allows the Kinect to look up and down. So depending on whether you put it above the TV or below the TV, it can still see you. The next Next thing is the four microphone, microphone array. And the microphone array allows the Kinect to actually hear from just one direction. So this, these are four microphones, no moving parts. And the microphone array allows me to listen to that direction and almost completely ignoring whatever coming from that direction. And you can change this direction as you want. It, uh, the microphone array with the very sophisticated echo cancellation, whatever technologies, actually allows you to listen to a movie, the 5.1 surround sound booming. And from three or four meters, you can just say Xbox, pause. And most of the time, it will actually hear you and pause. Now, this is a uh, very advanced technology because there, is, there can be as much as 40 times the difference between the sound of the movie itself and what you're seeing, what you're seeing from three or four meters. So that's pretty neat. Now as for the eyes of the Kinect, the Kinect actually has two eyes. One of the eyes is a regular RGB camera. So this is just like a webcam. It's not even a high quality webcam. Uh, the other, other part is much more interesting. It's called the depth camera. Depth meaning the distance between the Kinect and whatever it looks at. And uh, the depth camera is, is what allows the Kinect to do a lot of the things it can do. And there is a projector as well. So that's, this, that's the hardware itself. Now let's have a look at what you need to have and what you need to do to actually develop for Kinect. Uh, Today I'm talking about Kinect for Windows. So there's two kinds of Kinect, the Kinect for Xbox and the Kinect for Windows. I'm talking about the Windows one now. Uh, what you need is a Windows PC, the Kinect sensor itself, and you also need a power uh, adapter because uh, the Windows USB port doesn't have enough power to supply the Kinect. So you need a separate power adapter. Now, there are actually two kinds of Kinects on the market today. One of them is the Xbox Kinect, 
And the other one is the Windows, the Kinect for Windows device. And there are some differences between these two. Um, the Xbox Kinect is the one that you can plug into your Xbox and play games, or do whatever you want with it on the Xbox. The Windows Kinect is the one that you plug into a Windows machine. Now, you can plug the Xbox Kinect into a Windows machine, but there are certain differences. For example, the Xbox Kinect has a longer cable. And because of this longer cable, uh, there are certain configurations of USB cards and whatnot where the, Kinect, the Xbox Kinect won't work properly with a Windows PC. I haven't seen this myself, but it is possible to have uh, such, a, such a configuration. The Kinect has a shorter cable and it has been certified with, uh, with the standard USB ports. The next difference between the two is that the, the, uh, the Windows version of the Kinect actually has something called a near mode. And I will show you this later. But the, the Xbox version essentially sees from 80 centimeters to 4 meters. And the Windows version sees from 40 centimeters to 3 meters if you turn on the near mode. And the last difference is a licensing difference. So you can use the Xbox version for development. But you are not allowed to use the Xbox version for, live, for uh, deployment and live projects. Okay, so you can play with the Xbox version, but you have to buy the other one. And the other one is actually twice the price. And the reason for that is that the SDK is free, it's royalty free, it's totally free to download, you can play with it. So this is the only way that the Kinect for Windows team makes any money. This is about $125, this is about $250. Okay? Um, there is one more Kinect that uh, you may have heard about. This is the Kinect that's coming with the Xbox One console in November. The, this Kinect will be better, it will hear better, it will see better, it will have higher resolution, it will have better performance, etc., etc. It actually uses a different method of depth sensing than the, than the old versions. Um, this Kinect, uh, you won't be able to plug this Kinect into a Windows machine. But there is going to be another separate Kinect 2 for Windows, I have no idea what they're going to call it, uh, which you will be able to plug in the machine. Uh, the early adopter program for that starts in November and uh, it can actually be bought sometime early next year. So I was talking about the Kinect depth sensor. So let's see how this depth sensor works. It actually works this way. It projects and this is something that you really won't see anything wrong. It projects an infrared pattern. No, you don't see it. Uh, it projects an infrared pattern into the room. And this infrared pattern gets distorted as I move, as, I, as I'm here or here. And based on how the infrared pattern is distorted, the Kinect logic can decide the distance between this certain point where the pattern is distorted and the Kinect sensor itself. This is a very ingenious way of sensing the distance between the Kinect and, uh, and whatever is front of it. Now, This is all the code I'm going to show today, okay? Uh, so if you don't know programming, please bear with me. If you don't know C-sharp, please bear with me. I'm just talking about the key concepts. I don't have time to show you every single code uh, for every single feature because we will be sitting here all day. So this code, what it does, let me show you, is this. Yeah, it works. So what it does is this. On the left side, you can see a standard RGB camera, or you can see me on a standard RGB camera. On the right side, this is the depth image, the depth image that the Kinect sees. And you can see the further I'm going away, I'm becoming darker and darker. And if I go forward, you can see my hand is much lighter than, my, than the rest of my body. And at a certain point, 
will simply disappear. So this is about how close the pinnacle can see. Now this depth sensing technology uh, allows for a lot of things. But before we go into that, let me talk about the code behind this little application. Uh, the Kinect SDK has a notion of uh, streams. <clears throat> For example, there is this uh, color stream, which is a stream of color images, of color image frames, actually. So what we do right here is enable such a stream, and whenever a frame for the stream is ready, we set uh, an image to display that, uh, that color frame. It's pretty easy. If you are a coder, this is absolutely not production quality code, okay? This is a code that is the bare minimum to work. But for example, in the first line, we select the first available Kinect sensor, but we don't handle stuff like, what if there is no Kinect sensor, then the application will crash. What if there is uh, some other problem, the application will crash. This is, this is horrible code, but it is perfect for me to show you the basics, okay? So we have a stream, and the same goes for the depth stream. We have a depth stream, we enable it, and whenever a new frame is available, we convert it to a bitmap source and display it. That's how it works. And it, the same stream analogy can be used with the other features that I'm going to show later on. So, and this is the point where I need a volunteer. Anybody? Is it safe? Please, it is safe. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Thank you. Okay, please stand over there. And the next thing I'm going to show you is uh, the speech recognition part. Start. Start. Okay. Can you move just a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That, that's that's fine. Okay. That's fine. So in theory, what happens now is player X, which is you, you have to say a number for the tic-tac-toe game. One. One. Three. <laughs> you see, uh, he said three. But the Kinect was able to determine the direction the sound was coming from. And it says it is all players' turn. It's not his turn, it's my turn. So it didn't expect accept the three from him. If I say three, 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 eight, Something <laughs> then it works, okay? So uh, that's the that's the Kinect directional microphone that I was talking about. <laughs> Oopsie, let's move on. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting up so easily. So, so can I go or please stay? Okay. <laughs> oh, this me. Let me let me turn this off for just a minute. And let me talk about uh, let me talk about uh, what you see here. This uh, application is called the Kinect Explorer, and it basically shows you the basic stuff that the Kinect can do and the Kinect sees at this moment. So you can see the RGB camera and you can see the depth camera. And let me switch the two, so because that's probably more interesting. On the bottom. You can see the audio. So as I move around, you can see this the this bar moving as well. If I'm talking right here, it can see it sense that my speech is coming from this direction. Okay. So what we have here, uh, this is the depth stream, and if you move a little bit closer, you should become brighter and brighter and yeah. and brighter, and that's it. And now you're picturing. <laughs> Okay, um, now the interesting thing about the depth stream is that it allows the Kinect to actually separate him from the background. So that means 
that it is much easier for a computer vision and artificial intelligence and computer learning algorithm to actually determine the pose that he's taken on. So let me turn on the skeleton stream. see that it immediately recognized both of us. And I can do things like this, <laughs> and you can do even stupider things if you want. Can you come this way just a, just a step? Okay. So um, whatever he's doing, he can jump. Yes. <laughs> he can wave his arms, he can move his legs, he can do a Bruce Lee imitation. The, you're not doing that? <laughs> okay. Uh, the Kinect can actually follow most of his moves. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And this works at 30 frames per second. So this is the skeleton stream. The skeleton stream actually tells you, as a developer, the X, Y, Z, so the three-dimensional coordinates of different joints on your body. So for, for example, right now, the, the developer knows that my head is approximately two and a half meters and pretty much directly in front of the Kinect at this moment. So it's zero, zero, two and a half meters. And if I move over, it will be minus 10, zero, two and a half meters or something like that. So this, this 3D uh, joint tracking or skeleton tracking is, is, the, is the big thing about Kinect that you that allows us to do a lot of things. But there's another other version of the skeleton tracking, which is a CT skeleton. So you can see, if I, if I was sitting down, this, the Kinect wouldn't be able to follow me so well. So they added this CT skeleton, where the Kinect is only interested in my head uh, and my hands, but not the rest of my body. Okay. There's also a couple of settings that we can do. So for example, we can make the Kinect look up. We or look it down, make it look down. Mm -hmm. And this is very good for automatic calibration. So you can move the Kinect as, uh, uh, until you can actually see the entire person. And we set it back. So this is, uh, this is the, the SDK basic. So we talked about speech recognition, the Kinect for color and depth image, skeleton tracking, normal seated mode. But the Kinect actually can do one more thing, which is ghost detection. And you don't believe me? It can detect ghosts. Let me show you. It's a real one. It takes spirits to go close to it. This is from an American TV series called Ghost. Hunter. Meanwhile, back at the Colorado Grand Casino, Billy Pauly and Bill Chapel also document significant scientific paranormal activity. Can you move? Can you stand up? Can you walk? Can you do something different for me? Will you wave, wave to Billy? Are you serious right now? Will you wave? Oh my gosh, Bill. As Billy arrives, Bill Chapel is asking the small unexplained figure to wave to him, and on cue, you can clearly see it move and wave. Will you wave? Will you wave? Will you wave? Oh my gosh, Bill. So what actually happened here is uh, there's a file away. These guys put, a, put up a Kinect sensor in a haunted mansion or somewhere. Let me try it again. And uh, what happened is that they had something that's vaguely resembling a human figure, for example, like this chair. 
can you please move just a little bit away here? Out of, out of the picture. Can you move out, please? Uh, just over oh, there. Yeah. Just, uh, just for a minute. Okay. Thank you. So here's this, uh, here's this chair. And there's your ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and it's moving. <laughs> so this is, this is basically what happened. The depth sensor cannot really tell that it's a human being. It's, it's, if it's vaguely something human-like, then it will detect, uh, try to apply skeletal tracking on that. So uh, let's talk about some advanced features. You, do you want to join me for this one? Okay. Or somebody else? Maybe somebody else can want. Please. Thank you very much for your help. So the features I, I talked to you about until now are the basic features. But the Kinect SDK team has not stopped here. They have added tons of other cool features. And one of them is space tracking. Can you move uh, closer? Even closer? Yeah. OK, that's, that's fine. And then now there's two of us. So face tracking, actually what it does is it tracks your face. So just like skeleton tracking can tell where the 3D coordinates of your joints are, face tracking can actually tell where the 3D coordinates of certain features of your face are on. Now this uses both the depth and the, and the RGB cameras. So it requires pretty good lighting. And here's the task. Please do some silly faces for me. Open your mouth. Move your eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it cannot, and unfortunately, it cannot detect whether you have closed your eyes or not. But it can pretty much detect everything else. It can tell the orientation, the orientation of your head, whether it's tilting up or down. Everything like that. Okay. Next, Kinect Fusion. Uh, thank you very much for that. Kinect Fusion is a very interesting piece of technology. It's uh, this icon. And I hope I can demo it for you today. So Kinect Fusion makes a 3D scanner out of the Kinect. And the way it works is, uh, is like this. On the top left, top right, you can see the 3D, the depth, the depth, depth image. And on the, on the left side, what you see is an actual 3D reconstruction. So this is a 3D model that's been rendered with the GPU. And it's a little bit slow because this is a slow computer. So let me make it less precise. And you can see that as I move the Kinect around, it fills in the holes. And as an end result, what I can do is export this data as a 3D mesh in three different formats. And I can do whatever I want with it. Now there is one thing that the new version of the SDK, which is not out yet, but I'm allowed to show you today, uh, the 1.8 version of the SDK knows. And this new thing is the color, the adding of color. So if I just click this checkbox, you can see that it actually recalls the textures as well. So what you see right there is not a live image. It's the 3D representation of what the Kinect saw. Pretty cool, huh? So that's Kinect Fusion. And uh, and there is one more advanced feature that I want <coughs> to talk about in detail, which is Kinect Interactions. Now, Kinect is an interesting thing from a user experience design perspective or interaction design perspective because there's really no good and established way to do basic computer interaction stuff. 
For example, there is no good way to select an item from a list. And there is a barely working way of actually pressing the button, which is pretty common. Even if you have a even if you have a game where you you, you have to dance and you know the game the the game rates you based on how well you dance. Even if you have a game like that, you need these kind of interactions because first you have to select the song that you want to dance to. Okay? And uh, that's why uh, that's why this Kinect interaction is interesting. Kinect interaction is essentially a feature of the SDK which allows you to do less interesting but very important stuff like attaching a cursor or a pointer to your hand and moving it around on the screen and pressing buttons and so on. So let me show you uh, a little demo of this and explain to you the usability part. Now this demo has been designed for a higher resolution than the projector allows us now, but uh, you will be able to see a lot of things. So the first thing that you see in this demo is something that's called an attractor. But imagine this uh, application in an exhibition scenario or a trade show scenario, okay? And people just walk in, walking by and they see this slideshow. So they see the slideshow, and something happened, and that, that's me. It's a pretty bad version of me, but that was me. And now it says, to get started, lift your hand. Okay, I'm lifting my hand. And this is how I get, I get to be pulled in with the exhibition, okay? And now I'm hooked, now I can, now I can do all the stuff. Now, with the Xbox, who, who of you have played with Xbox Kinect? Maybe six people, not too many. So with the, with the Xbox, the selection uh, happens the following way. Just like here, when you raise your hand, uh, they have, there's this cursor which follows, you, follows your hand. So it's the same. But on the Xbox, what usually happens is you have to, once you are over the button, there is a circle that starts to appear around your hand. And when the circle is fully filled, then the button is pressed. Now this has <coughs> several usability issues. For example, uh, first time Kinect users can really easily understand that uh, the hand cursor is actually their hand. That's not, a, that's not a problem to understand. But what they do next when they are above a button, they use something like this and nothing happens. Or, and, the, and the circle starts to feel that as, as you do this, your hand moves away, it moves over another button, whatever. So it's, it's a little bit frustrating. And then they finally find out that the circle gets filled, then the button is pressed. Okay, so now they're good. And they, they are on the next screen of the application and looking on the, on the corner and their hand is still up because they didn't put it down. And what happens, is they're looking there and the hand starts to have a circle and they're looking there and suddenly the game changes to another screen and something happens. I didn't want to do that. That's not good user experience. The other thing that can happen is that the circle starts to feel and the user actually realizes that the circle is feeling. So what happens now is he just jerks his hands away. Oh my God! It's like you scare the user with the user with the user interface. You don't want to scare the user, okay? At least not in the menu. So um, this is definitely not an optimal um, optimal interaction design, but it works because there was nothing better. And now with the 1.7 version of the SDK, so the one which is actually out now, uh, Microsoft has found a new way of doing this thing. And this new way is the following. Hello. I want to be purple. Okay. So the, this new way is the following. I move my hand over the cursor, and no, uh, over the button, and notice a lot of things happen. For one, there is a sound. The button grows. There is a halo around my hand. And now what I can do is actually start pushing forward and I move my hand forward, 
this purple feeling starts to appear. And actually my hand is drawn to the middle of the button so that even if I move it out, uh, it, doesn't get pr it doesn't press another button. So it's over there, it's over there, and then I, and I push it forward and the button is pressed. Oops. This is a much better user experience than what we had uh, earlier. Yeah, let me get back to you. Come on. Mm. Oh, geez. Okay, is that it? So, and also it's much quicker because I didn't have to wait two seconds for the circle to be filled. So now what I can do is I can, I don't know, play a video. This is just a demo application. I think the coolest thing about hand down and what is video is that it's fundamental from its very inception. I can go back. And it's a pretty fluid thing. It's not as effective and not as productive as a mouse or a touch, but it works, finally. Um, there is another, there is another issue with the current uh, Xbox uh, user interface, and this issue is uh, choosing an item from a few hundred, which is perfectly what, what's happening. I mean, I want to watch a movie with my wife, and the movie starts with S. I don't know Star Wars, whatever, and the movies are in ABC, and I have two hundred movies. So what happens with the current Xbox user interface is I, okay, start movie, and I, first five item, next five item, next five item. But by the time we get to Star Wars, I have to go and have a shower, <laughs> because it's so exhausting. So that's, that's not, not a good user experience. And actually, until now, there hasn't been a good solution for this. I've seen many solutions with different games and everything, and there hasn't been a good, stable, and reliable solution for this. Every game has their own solution, and not, none of them work properly. So, let's start this game again. Okay. So what, uh, what the Microsoft uh, has managed to do with this version of the SDK is they actually managed to differentiate between the hand states of open hand and closed hand. Open, closed. And now if my hand is closed, I can actually drag stuff around. And this works pretty much like a touch screen. So I can make this, uh, make this map go on, I can stop it anytime I want. I can scroll it up and down. It stops at the end. And if you imagine doing this with a long list, you can do this, swipe, and then it will do five, ten screens of words before it actually stops. So it's a much better experience. It's still not as good as on a touch screen or a mouse wheel. But the whole idea of Kinect is that you don't need any other device, you're just standing in the middle of the room or sitting in the middle of the room and doing stuff. So this is, a, this is the new interaction model uh, for, for selecting an item for, for a long list. And this, uh, this grab gesture can actually work with, uh, with reading text like this. I can make it scroll, I can stop it at any time. Like this, I can set up a picture, how oh, it's beautiful, back, etc. So this is the new interaction model that Kinect Interaction allows us to do. Now Kinect Interaction actually has two parts to it. One of them is a low level part, which basically allows you to put these hand cursors up, but doesn't do it. It just gets you uh, things like where, where is the hand in the XY coordinate system, where is the other hand in the XY coordinate system, and uh, whether it's open or closed, or you know how much is it, it is pushed forward. Now, um, there is another part of the Kinect for uh, the Kinect Interaction SDK, 
And this part is uh, for WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation, which is uh, the technology used to create pretty much all of the apps that you have seen today. And uh, if you are developing a WPF application, you can just simply put some of these controls on the screen, and it's pretty much the same design developer experience as if you were developing a mouse application. So you have a, for example, you have a push button, you move the push button, resize it, change the text, change the color, change the whatnot, and it then from that point on, it works with the hand cursor. You actually have to do something more. You have to define a Kinect region first, which is the area of the screen where the hand cursor is actually allowed to happen. And, and the same goes for the scroll, scrolling stuff. So you, um, you put a scroll viewer on the screen, and then it automatically works. Now there's one more thing, which is these controls actually work with the mouse. And this is very good because as great as the Kinect is, when you're developing the software, you don't want to stand up just to test something, if it works or not. And the mouse is much faster to you know, just click around the application and see whether the bug that you just fixed is still there or not. Two more demos. Can I have a question? Uh, can we keep it to the end? Okay. Thank you. Two more demos. This is, uh, this is the poor man's weather report. So as you can see, as you, you saw earlier, the Kinect can differentiate between a human being and something else, and the background. So if you take this differentiation and move it over to having a, um, so, so mapping it to the RGB camera, then you have this effect. And this is okay, well, it's actually not okay. It's pretty bad. It looks pretty bad. So the upcoming version of the 1.8 SDK has actually created another feature. And it's still not perfect, but much better now. So this is separation from the background. And I, you can put any other background over there. So, uh, I showed you Kinect Fusion with color, which is a feature for the upcoming 1.8 version of the SDK. I showed you this advanced green screen, and there's one more thing I don't have time to show you, which is Kinect in, uh, actually now includes, not the, not, this, uh, not the device, but the Kinect SDK, actually now includes a, a socket server a local socket server, and you can connect to the socket server from an HTML or Flash or whatever other application you want to, and get most of the features out of it. Uh, uh, so now it is possible to create an HTML JavaScript application uh, that is driven by Kinect. Okay. So that's uh, pretty much it. I have uh, seven minutes for questions. If you have any, thank you very much for listening. Um, about this uh, pushing, pushing feature, yes. like pushing button, will it, is it expected to come to Xbox uh, anytime soon? I don't know anything about that, but I assume it will. Yes. So you showed that it detects the hand movement and so on. So is it possible to add some kind of sensor or I don't know, mark some kind of uh, object so the internet can see that it looks like a toy gun in the ad so we can get this and why it works? Mm -hmm. um, it is possible, but it's not something that the SDK does out of, uh, out of the box. So actually, if you, if you have a, a, I don't know, a shield or something like that in front of you, it can pretty much confuse the skeleton tracking because it's, it's uh, uh, this, uh, trained for human beings, okay, and the, and the general shape of a human being. So um, as for smaller stuff like, I don't know, a gun, that doesn't matter. Now, uh, what you can actually do is you have access to the depth stream itself. 
we have access to the infrared stream itself. And that means that if you're good enough with computer learning and a lot of other pretty advanced stuff, then you can do your own uh, item detection. One of the things I have seen, which works pretty well, is that um, the guy created a game where for children, where a le letter came from the sky, and you had to catch the right letters for, I don't know, a dog picture or something like that. And you actually had a basket with you. And the basket had uh, straight edges. So it, it was pretty much like a box with handles. And uh, these straight edges are fairly easy to detect. There are certain algorithms that you can use. So apart from the skeleton tracking, the, this additional algorithm could track the, the, the exact position of the box. And then you could catch the, catch the letters if you want. Okay, so the, the possibility is there, but uh, it's not something that the SDK has out of the box. Uh, yes? This uh, socket version, does it also support video and uh, image streams? To be honest, I don't know. Um, the question is, can you do automation tests if I'm developing a game? Yes. There is a, well, kind of, yes. So you can, you can do repetitive tests. Uh, what is possible is there is a, a, a tool called Kinect Studio, which I didn't have time to show you today. And the Kinect Studio is actually able to connect to a Kinect application and record whatever the Kinect sees, both the dev streams and the, and the RGB streams. And uh, then you can record it and play it back later, even, I think, even without a connect. So in theory, it is possible, but you may have to have a connect connected. I'm not so sure about that. So I can have, like, record the stream and have SDK. You know. Yeah, yeah. so it, it's, basically, it's basically recording something that happens in front of a connect and replaying it to any application you want to replay it to. Also, frameworks, if I don't want to connect to SDK directly, are there like, like for the games it is popular to get like physics library, like uh, we mm -hmm. should have some level of abstractions. Are there like um, ready made uh, available um, frameworks like physics libraries like, for connect? Um, there is a, so if you don't want to use the SDK, you are from a licensing perspective, not allowed to use the Kinect sensor without the SDK. But there is a search, a pretty uh, viral search party community, and this community is doing crazy stuff with the Kinect. Uh, they, their skeleton tracking, etc., is not as advanced, but they're doing some other stuff that the Kinect team does not. So um, for an experiment, uh, you can look into that. It's called Open Lui, I think. Any other questions? It's all right. Okay. So thank you very much for coming. Okay. And have a nice day.